Good morning. Is this Kevin Pierce? This is Kevin Pierce. And I'm a and si- Dr. I'm a, and- Yeah, sitting next to Dr. Andrew Stalker here. Hi. Dr. Stalker, welcome to the Founder BB Show here live in Dallas, Texas. I want to thank you guys for joining us. Thanks for having us on. Well, Kevin, uh, you are a former professional snowboarder. You carry the Olympic torch in Sochi. But also, I think maybe one of your most important things that people will know about you is that you are a TBI survivor. Yeah, you know, um, it's been crazy, this uh, this brain injury that I sustained. And, yeah, it's been um, it's been wild coming back from this. And, you know, what's kind of become possible and the awareness I've been able to raise for, um, you know, people that are going through brain injuries and, you know, also this um, little unknown disease called PBA that we're talking about here today. Okay, let me switch over to Dr. Andrew Starka. Dr. Starka, welcome. Would you explain this uh, uh, condition for us as a board-certified neurologist and psychiatrist? Certainly. So, PBA is a neurologic condition that can arise from a variety of neurologic illnesses. Traumatic brain injury is one, but also a person who has Alzheimer's disease or stroke or multiple sclerosis could have PBA. There's an estimated 2 million people with PBA, of course, much of it unrecognized. When someone has PBA, they have loss of control over their emotion, laughing and crying. So a person who has PBA might laugh or cry more than they want to. They might cry excessively in a situation where that's not called for, or they might laugh or cry spontaneously when it doesn't match one of their underlying emotions. This could be very socially um, awkward for them. You can imagine if a person had a crying episode at work or in another social situation that was not really matching the mood of the situation, then that would be you know, really awkward for that person people wouldn't understand what was happening. They wouldn't understand why you were crying, and it would be embarrassing, potentially. And how many, do you have any numbers of the number of people who experience this? So there's an estimated 2 million people that have PBA, but much of it is unrecognized, and I think a lot of times it's thought of as depression. Let me give you an example. I have a patient who was in an automobile accident recently, and after his accident, he found himself crying a lot more than he was previously. He had hit his head in the automobile accident, resulting in a traumatic brain injury. He was crying in situations where he never would have before, and he didn't understand it, and he thought he was depressed. His family thought he was depressed. And I think this could happen a lot, where someone is having crying symptoms, they're thought of to be depressed, so they don't continue on and look for the diagnosis of PBA. If someone hears this and they think that they might have PBA, they can go to the website pbainfo.org. There's a self-assessment test there, and a person could take it to find out if their symptoms uh, are consistent with PBA or if they have the symptoms of PBA. Then they could take that information to their doctor and use that to think about things further. Kevin, let me ask you, since you experienced a traumatic brain injury, but now you're obviously at a different state. Uh, how did you overcome this? Yeah, you know, I was um, I was lucky, and it's taken a lot of work and a long time and a lot of patience. But um, you know, the brain the brain heals slowly. It doesn't like to do anything quickly. I've learned, and um, it's taken a long time. It's uh, it's been just over four years now, and my brain's still healing, and I'm still getting better. And you know, it's um, it's gotten to the point now where I've you know been able to. Uh, you know, start teaching people about it. And it's been really cool to raise this awareness about brain injuries and PBA and to, you know, allow people to understand that you may have these conditions, but, you know, there is a treatment and there is a way to fix it. Okay, tell me how cool was it to carry the Olympic torch in Sochi? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty uh, That was pretty wild. I um, I was going for that four years ago in Vancouver, but I just missed it. And I, uh, I got to go do it over in Russia, and it was a... Uh, it's a whole different world over there. It was my first time ever uh, visiting Russia, and it was uh, it was really cool to get to go over there and to be a part of those games. Experience of a lifetime. Well, Kevin, I thank you so very much for sharing. Dr. Starker, thank you for being so clear on your explanation of what it is. And once again, Dr. Starker, if you give me that website. Yeah, the website is pbainfo.org. Thank you both, guys. Thank you for being on the Valder Beebe Show. It's been my honor. Thanks for having us.